the twin motor XC40 gets more mileage from a single battery and tweaks the chassis a bit. But it's still ridiculously fast. Evolution is faster in the EV market. Although Volvo's first EV has only been on the market for two years, the XC40 Recharge has already received significant upgrades with the launch of a new rear-wheel drive version and an updated dual-motor all-wheel drive option. Next to each other the same changes apply to the slightly slimmer C40 Recharge with a lower roof. There's so much to like about the new and improved AWD version, so let's take a separate look at the new rear-wheel drive powertrain. On paper, the difference from the twin engine is not noticeable, especially since the maximum power remains unchanged at 402 horsepower. But behind this theme number there was a significant change. Previous all-wheel drive versions used the same front and rear motors, but for 2024 it will switch to a new 255 horsepower rear motor designed and built by Volvo. A device that supplies power to the front axle of the future EX90. The twin-engine variant also gets a new front-engine asynchronous unit that idles when extra power or traction isn't needed to put down 147 brake horsepower and improve efficiency. Final EPA figures aren't yet available, but Volvo's estimate for the twin-engine version is 98 MPGU, up from 85 MPGU for the 23 model and 106 MPGU for the rear-engine XC40. U.S. cars will continue to use the same 75.0 kWh battery, but Europe could soon follow with upgrades to 79.0 kWh units. This larger battery will be standard on single-engine versions. But even with the battery intact, Volvo predicts the XC40 AWD recharge will achieve an EPA range of 400 miles. Estimated range for single-engine cars is 473 miles and for outgoing cars it's 223 miles. The slightly slimmer C40 Recharge should achieve figures of 257 and 297 miles per gallon respectively. DC fast charging remains up to 150 kilowatts for the 75.0 kilowatt hour battery, which is impressive despite the fact that the 79.0 kilowatt hour unit can now handle 200 kilowatts. Other minor changes have also been made to improve the driving experience. The twin-engine XC40 Recharge has always been almost absurdly quick given its mission in life, but its 60 miles per hour time of 4.3 seconds is the same. The time was one of the fastest Volvos we tested at the time. Some chassis struggled with handling. The considerable mass of the car. Volvo says the new version weighs about the same as the previous version but has a new rear subframe, softer springs and revised dampers. More passive and adaptive, but with new valves designed to improve high-frequency response and also ride comfort. Like its petrol-powered sibling, the XC40 Recharge is still a light car, but it doesn't offer a refined driving experience. The European cars I drove in Sweden had Michelin Cross Climate all-season tires. Depending on wheel size, U.S. market vehicles will get either 19-inch Continentals or 20-inch Pirelli all seasons. It has high dynamic protection, good traction, quick starts without complaints and feels just as fast as the previous version. However, lateral grip is still limited, and the new powertrain retraction doesn't alter the basic balance of the chassis, easily inducing understeer in tight corners. The XC40 Recharge with all-wheel drive feels even more comfortable when driving smoothly. I know Swedish roads are mostly slippery, but the race seems to have improved. The XC40 Recharge certainly cruised through speed bumps and showed the best control over the few waves we could find, but as always, it feels heavier, and weighs over 1,000 pounds, than its siblings. Gas it remains a relaxed cruiser at highway speed with a breeze whispering through the top of the front door. Unlike many of its competitors, the XC40 Recharge doesn't offer multiple driving modes. The only variable settings are steering effort, smooth settings feel more natural, and single pedal mode selection. This works effectively, but lacks the ability to change the starting regeneration level. The rest of the experience is very close to the petrol XC40. 
the charging booths are also spacious and decorated with a variety of interesting materials. Some of it, particularly the textured plastic parts on the dash and the top of the door panels, feel more practical than decorative, but we liked our car's gray cloth seats, which look a lot better than the optional leather. Luggage space is also good, with a roomy trunk and even a compact charging cable slot. The 2024 XC40 Recharge will be available in the US later this year, with pricing still to be confirmed. As always, it feels like a machine with more power and performance than most users will need. It still feels like an electric car made from a gas car. With the EX90 and smaller EX30, we see how much better the battery-powered Volvo is when it sits on a purpose-built electric architecture. 